us the history of Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes was revealed. In our previous video, we talked about Total Film Magazine, especially an article where the history of Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes was revealed. In this one, we learned that the name of Noah's tribe is the Eagle Clan, as well as other important details about the characters of Raka and Nova. In this video, we will be talking about other revelations found in this article, about Proximus Caesar and much more. So, if you want to know more about the history of Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Welcome to the Oasis Geek. Total Film Magazine, after explaining the motivations of Noah and Proximus Caesar, went on to tell us about the inspiration for the first films and the desire to not remake the original story as Tim Burton did. This part of the article reads as follows. None of them wants to remake Planet of the Apes like Tim Burton did. But, says Jaffa, certainly there's a question of how Colonel Taylor ended up on that beach. Meanwhile, Kingdom has some major callbacks to the original movie that pay homage on one level and presage what's to come on another. One is the human roundup sequence. There is a mirroring in our film to that first one, but it's also completely different, says Alan. Another has echoes of the Statue of Liberty sequence, the discovery of the observatory seen in the trailer. That's our Statue of Liberty moment, Dorrance tells Total Film. Interestingly, it is mentioned that they don't want to do a remake, but that the question of how Taylor got there is still present. Again, this is another hint that we may see some of the time travel technology in this movie, and that it may not be as far removed from the original story as they are trying to make us believe. The article also confirms something we mentioned in a previous video, and that is that the movie could have a moment similar to the Statue of Liberty. In the article, it is mentioned that this moment will be when they discover the observatory. It is strange that this is mentioned, since the one who discovered the Statue of Liberty was Taylor, and in the previews we see that May or Nova is the one who finds the telescope. Again, this is another reference to astronauts, and I think that's where the story goes, but let's continue with the article. In this one, it mentions that the actors had to learn to behave like apes, but it reveals something interesting about Nova's character, who also had to learn some things for her character. Alan joined in some of the movement lessons, but as a human character she had a different remit. Albeit a human different from us, even if she wasn't quite feral like the film's other humans. It was a different process for me because of Nova's backstory, says Alan, whose movement coaching was more involved. There's a sort of rabbit in headlights quality to the physicality, says Alan, of playing a human, even an intelligent one, living in an environment where apes are the dominant species. It was important in terms of just feeling uncomfortable being around these apes and how scary that is, but also feeling less than in terms of how the world is and how humans are within this world. This means without a doubt that Nova's origin story will be shown in the movie and it is possible that she has been with the apes longer than we think. Perhaps she was rescued by Raka when she was just a child, but we will talk about that later. The article goes on to tell us about Proximus Caesar's motivations. Ball envisioned Proximus as a Genghis Khan type character, whose ultimate goal is to build a world for apes as his kind begins to mirror humanity's march through civilization at a far quicker pace as a result of discovering human advancements. Durand saw Proximus as the first truly high-thinking ape. He drew a lot of inspiration from the words that Caesar left behind. We have here the confirmation of the conquest purposes of Proximus Caesar, but this is not all. The article goes on to say the following. But he interpreted them to fit his philosophy of what needs to happen to ensure a future for apes, says Durand. Sure, there's some narcissism, but I truly believe he was like, unless we do it this way, we're going to end up back where we were hundreds of years ago. We're not going to be able to have any control in society unless we continue to evolve. So, he studied human history like crazy. He learned everything that he possibly could about the empires that rose and fell. 
This description of Proximus Caesar makes him perhaps one of the most interesting villains in the Planet of the Apes universe. And I am sure that many people will think that Proximus Caesar's actions in the movie are necessary for the survival of his species. No doubt this is very interesting, because it will not show a black and white villain with unidirectional intentions, who only wants power, but Proximus Caesar is a person with a non-selfish goal. He wants to help his species, but the power begins to corrupt him. The article concludes talking about the future of the franchise, and we can read the following. Will he do another? Referring to Wes Ball, he says it would be awesome to, but that there are other movies he wants to tackle. Like his next project, a screen adaptation of seminal video game, The Legend of Zelda. He stands and unzips his hoodie to reveal a t-shirt featuring Japanese typography emblazoned above a picture of Zelda protagonist Link. I have this awesome idea, he teases. I've been thinking about it for a long freaking time, of how cool a Zelda movie would be. We've got another few weeks before we're supposed to turn over Kingdom, and off it goes into the world to do what it's going to do. Then I'll probably take a short break to recharge. Then we'll go off to the races. I want to fulfill people's greatest desires. I know it's important this Zelda franchise to people, and I want it to be a serious movie. A real movie that can give people an escape. That's the thing for me about those games. I want to live in that world. That's the thing I want to try to create. It's got to feel like something real. Something serious and cool, but fun and whimsical. That might sound like a grand ambition, but if he pulls off Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, there's every reason to beat his chest for what's next. Undoubtedly, this magazine article has revealed a lot about the story and how it could expand in the world. We now know that the Eagle Clan prohibits Noah from visiting the Forbidden Zone, and this is where he finds Nova and Raka. We know that Proximus Caesar wants to conquer the world and use human technology. New movies were also talked about, and this means that although the people in charge of this movie have other projects, they are not closed to the possibility of other movies, and as mentioned in other articles, it has been thought that this would be the first in a new trilogy. With this new information, the story of Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes makes more sense, and now we can make a better theory of what is really happening in the story. So if you want to know what this new theory will be with the new details, don't forget to subscribe to this channel, because we will be talking about it in the next video. And for more videos of your favorite series and movies, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. You are on. The Oasis Geek